Let's turn to climate, because today the Italian government announced that it will start paying furlough money to construction and agricultural companies that lay off their staff in regions facing extreme temperatures. In the United States today, Joe Biden has done something similar, a raft of new measures to protect workers who are most vulnerable in this heat. He's also announced additional funding to improve weather forecasting and grants to ensure clean drinking water in those western states currently affected by drought. Right now, 150 million Americans from the West Coast through the Midwest into the Northeast are now under heat alerts with temperatures expected to approach 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the nation's capital. I don't think anybody can deny the impact of climate change anymore. There used to be a lot of time when I first got here, a lot of people said, oh, it's not a problem. Well, I don't know anybody, I shouldn't say that. I don't know anybody who honestly believes climate change is not a serious problem. In fact, he said climate change is now an existential threat, and forecasters would agree. July is set to be the hottest month ever recorded in the world. The head of the United Nations says the era of global warming is over. It is global boiling that has begun. Most temperature records date back only to the 1940s, but some experts believe this month has been the hottest globally for 120,000 years, and that is linked directly to burning of fossil fuels. Antonio Gutierrez pleaded for world leaders to act on global emissions. According to the data released today, July has already seen the hottest three-week period ever recorded, the three hottest days on record, and the highest ever ocean temperatures for this time of year. The consequences are clear and they are tragic. Children swept away by monsoon rains, families running from the flames, workers collapsing in scorching heat. For vast parts of North America, Asia, Africa and Europe, it's a cruel summer. For the entire planet, it is a disaster. And for scientists, it is unequivocal. Humans are to blame. All this is entirely consistent with predictions and repeated warnings. The only surprise is the speed of the change. Climate change is here, it is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. Arizona, they've had 26 straight days over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. We're joined by Democrat and former Arizona House uh, leader Andres Cano. Andres, good to see you. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, 125 days in Arizona without rainfall. Does everyone still have access to water? Well, in our tribal communities, Christian, that disparity is absolutely uh, an issue that we have to address. And I have to say off the bat, uh, President Biden and world leaders are right. We have to act. We have to adapt to this climate and we have to not look the other way. Uh, we have had consecutive heat day after day in my home state of Arizona. Our third week now, uh, above 43 degrees Celsius, uh, triple digit temperatures. Uh, this is a national state of emergency and really needs to be thought of as an international uh, epidemic. And yet 23% of power generation in Arizona comes from coal. That's right. And the more that we are going to continue to kick the can down the road, the more we're going to be having uh, Arizonans lose their lives and go to our hospitals. I mean, all of our burn units in the state of Arizona right now are at capacity, and a significant majority of those cases are directly related to heat. I mean, uh, I just read the story of a woman in a wheelchair who uh, fell uh, outdoors and uh, had uh, severe burns, uh, now is left with permanent damage to her health and, of course, to her emotional well-being, uh, probably until uh, for many, many years now, Kristen. Mm. The, so let's talk about the, the laws or the measures that he's, he's put in place today, because it's interesting that the, the, the similar things being put in place now across southern Europe, the, the, the protections for workers. How important do you think that would be? Well, until uh, America and in particular conservative uh, Republicans in our country start to take uh, climate resiliency and climate change seriously, I think we're going to continue to have this issue. I mean, it's, we're lucky to have Joe Biden at the top in the White House. But in my uh, state, which just turned to a Democratic governor, we've been trying to ring the alarms for many years now, only to be told that additional workers' protections would harm business owners throughout our state. That's just absolute baloney. What we have to continue to do is prioritize the health and safety of workers who deserve access to very fundamental things like water, shade, 
pull down periods. Uh, these should not be considered uh, any kind of luxuries in this kind of environment. But uh, until we have politicians who are willing to prioritize our health and well-being and our climate, we're going to keep going back to the same equation. Um, just uh, with regards to, to what he didn't declare today, he's not called it a climate emergency. There are some in your state who are pushing for um, a federal emergency, um, a, a sort of federal emergency to deal with extreme events like heat in the same way that perhaps Florida would deal with hurricanes. What difference would that make locally? Well, we need the resources, and, and not only do we need the money, we need the protections enshrined into law. I mean, we started off right now talking about access to water. It continues to be a huge issue because we are not looking at the data before us, listening to the scientists who know that this is a very, very uh, serious and real issue. And so what does a, a declaration of emergency mean? Uh, it means that we uh, change our behavior, that we are able to truly prioritize this. And, and you know, I've seen the other side uh, who wants to deny climate change say that there's nothing new about triple-digit temperatures here in Arizona. Uh, they need to wake up and smell the coffee. This is uh, happening right before our eyes, and none of this is normal. We should not treat it as such. Paul Wall, I don't think there are many in, in politics in this country who de 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 sort of deny what is happening, the science. Everybody embraces the science within Westminster, but we're not moving quickly enough. And a lot of people would point to the record profits that Centrica made today, £3.3 .3 billion, pounds, a threefold profit rise last year uh, because of those rising energy prices. And, and yet, a lot of that money doesn't seem to go into what we really need, and that is renewable energy, and quickly. I think that's true, Christian. I mean, one of the, the biggest uh, wake-up calls is obviously this idea of furlough coming in in Italy. And it's actually, in, in many ways, the parallel with COVID is quite strong, because in Italy, a recent report showed that uh, actually the excess deaths last summer in the heat wave, you know, there were enormous, 18,000 people, most of them elderly, died in Italy from the heat wave last summer. Mm. Now, that reminds you of that awful phrase, excess deaths from the COVID pandemic. And Italy, again, was one of the first countries that was hit. That should wake everybody up. But those studies showed that, you know, here in the UK, 3,000 people died because of excess heat last summer. Um, you know, across the rest of Europe, Spain, 11,000, and Germany, 8,000. So you think, at what point will politicians at the top realise this is a genuine health risk? You know, if you compare it to the pandemic, it's the right way to approach it, which is to say you need emergency measures now, but you also need to build resilience for the long term, effectively vaccinating the planet from climate change. And that's only through things like the Inflation Reduction Act that you can do that. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's interesting because on the Republican side, Ron, um, there's still a lot of people sceptical about the Inflation Reduction Act and the cost that it's putting on uh, the US economy. Um, but as Paul says, uh, we have almost now an epidemic of deaths from heat. There, I think there were 1,300 last year in the United States due to extreme heat. Look, I, I have my skepticism about the Inflation Reduction Act, which actually doesn't do anything to reduce inflation given what we've seen with the Federal Reserve racing by, you know, a basis point, 0.25%. Uh, so but there's the about Reserve 550 billion in that for green energy, correct? That's about right. No, Christian, let, let me just say this. I, I don't think it does anything to reduce inflation. But what I do believe is that Republicans and Democrats need to come together and sort of put their uh, differences aside and say, why is it that the ocean in Florida yesterday was reported to be at 100 degrees Fahrenheit? Why is it right outside of my window right now that there is a heat advisory and a heat emergency that it's not safe to go outside for extended periods of time? I don't know what climate change is, but I can tell you it's hot as blazes here in the States. It's hot as blazes around the world. And clearly something is going on, something is happening. And I believe it's man-made and it's, it's, it's here to stay until we say, let's drop the partisan fighting and let's look at the science and address it. Uh, Andres, there are about 1.6 million people living in Phoenix, 5 million residents in the, the metro area. One forecast says that's expected to grow to over seven and a half million by 2055. Do you think the city's energy and waste infrastructure will be able to cope with that, given the sort of temperatures that you're experiencing? those 
who are most disproportionately affected by climate change. And more often than not, those are people of color here in the States. Those are indigenous uh, brothers and sisters. It's Latinos, it's African-Americans who don't have access to the air conditioners, who for whatever reason in our country don't have a home that they can afford. Those are the real issues that we have to address. And I do believe that until uh, corporations take this seriously and, uh, and, and unless they stop looking just at their bottom line, I mean, we're gonna continue to face this issue. 425 deaths in the last year related to heat in Arizona. Uh, that is not normal. It is absolutely a cause for concern. Yeah. And of course, a huge debate, which we don't have time to get into, about where people live. So many living on floodplains, for instance, and in metropolitan areas where there just isn't going to be enough water. Well, I'll have to leave it there. I'm just kind of thank you so much for joining us. Good to talk to you tonight. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.